Okay, well, welcome everybody. Welcome, Eric. Thank it's, you. Uh, Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's so nice to have you today. And today we we have an opportunity to to learn from a, a Mr. Eric Decker, who is a seasoned professionals in information technology. Uh, Eric, we appreciate your willingness to share your expert advice uh, with our viewers. Our goal today is to provide guidance to young adults that are either exploring various careers or ready to, to jumpstart their career. And we're excited to hear about the advice that you can give to them. Uh, so Mr. Eric Decker has nearly 30 years experience in information technology and software development. He started his professional career uh, doing software testing and development while still a student at B Brigham Young University. After graduating from BYU in computer science and aerospace studies, he received a commission as an Air Force officer. So congratulations and thank you for your service. Uh, while in the Air Force, Eric led a, a team of software developers for the Air Force Y2K program. After four years in the Air Force, Eric moved his young family to Denver, Colorado, where he has held many positions and disciplines within the software engineering and information technology. Eric is currently at Denver Water, where he leads the enterprise applications and data service teams, encompassing software applications for finance, human resources, billing, document management, geospatial, and asset management. <laughs> it sounds like you're a really busy guy. In addition to that, uh, uh, Eric uh, loves spending time with his family, gardening, doing home improvement, and serving in various callings in, in the church. So welcome, Eric, and we're very glad to have you today. Thank you. Thank you. So Eric, would you, uh, would you spend just a little bit of time telling us about your own career path and, and what you feel has helped you to become so successful in, in your business? So when I reflect back on, you know, my trajectory and, and what has helped me probably first and foremost has just been willing to risk uh, challenges. Um, many times in my career, there would be opportunities presented and my peers would like not want to go forward. And I would raise my hand and say, I'll try it. And um, <laughs> And that's happened several times. And with those times that actually have been, you know, some of those pivot points that I can look back and say, I am so glad I took that risk and did that. Sometimes those risks were, you know, building a system and architecting a system that we've never done before, but I felt capable to be able to do it where I had peers that would tell me, there's no way I'm going near that. I'm not <laughs> going to touch that. Um, but, you know, when I look back, yeah, it was hard. I learned a lot, but at the same time, some of the software that I've written has been around for now over 20 years that I was the architect and the architect for. We processed billions of dollars through it. And I feel great about it. You know, I look back and it's it's been, you know, one of those things that you can really hang your hat on. Um, so in addition to volunteering to, at least I've been someone who, I've always wanted to know how everything works. So I've, no job has been like, oh, I'm not, I'm too good for that. I, I try not to do that. Mm -hmm. I like to know how everything works. So I've held a lot of different disciplines and I started off as a tester and and, and that was good to understand that, but it wasn't very long before. And um, my boss came to me and I don't know why he came to me and not to others, but he, he just gave me a new software development package on my desk and said, we need a defect tracking system, which is just a database to track our bugs. We don't have one. Could you build it? And I said, well, I don't know. I'll try. I'll do my best. <laughs> and um they, I did. I built it. Um, this was in the day when there wasn't the internet to go to. 
and 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 I guess professionals today have no idea how good they have it because everything I had to do was just by reading the little material I had, making phone calls, networking. But um, yeah, so the big two points is just being willing to risk it, but you got to bring it when you're able to risk it. Treat every opportunity that you're given basically as an on-the-job job interview. It's an extended job interview, and but you know have the mindset that at the end of this interview you're going to get that job. You, yeah, you, yeah. I really like that. I like I like the fact that you're you're willing to accept challenges. I had a young lady come to me that that I was coaching, and she got a really great position. And uh, just shortly after she started with the company, she called me and said, Scott, I need to come and meet with you right away. And, and I said, okay, well, she actually worked in the same building. I said, come on down and, and we'll meet together. And, and she said, Scott, you'd never believe it. They're giving me uh, assignments outside of my job description. What do I do about that? <laughs> and I told her, I said, well, did you tell them thank you? <laughs> I, I said, that means that they feel like you can accomplish things outside your job description. And she was really taken back. She thought she thought that uh, um, it, that wasn't a good thing. And I told her, Just, yeah. you, you need to take those assignments. That'll help to, to broaden you, uh, your capabilities. Yes. So tell me, tell me, uh, Eric, how did you get the position that you're in right now? It sounds like you have tremendous amounts of responsibility. <laughs> so I've had leadership responsibilities at different times in my career. Um, mostly, I didn't apply for them. So in, in one position, early, early on, I was asked to take over a team. And I was what we call a sole contributor. I didn't have any direct reports. and um, I went from having no direct reports to 25 direct reports in, in one interview. And then later on, I was back to being an independent contributor and an architect when I switched positions. And then one day my boss called me in and the same thing happened. And I walked out with 30 direct reports or something, it, you know, a team. And then, and now it's, um, you know, it's grown, you know, since then. Um, and I think the reason for that is, is, is uh, I'm able to take engineering and technology and I'm good at it, but I can also listen and be empathetic and understand people and, and be a good leader. And in, in the information technology career field and in software development, there are, I would say the majority of the people that are attracted to it and stay in it they're of a personality type that they would rather not mingle with people if they can. Sure. And so we actually have a difficult time finding leaders of people that are capable of leading and want to lead. It's remarkable how sparse the talent pool is for hmm. potential leaders who actually want to lead and are good. So it's, it's that ability to communicate with other people. Oh, absolutely. It's that's a that's a big aspect of your job. So so Eric has has your been has your career been a continual upward path or has there been some zigs and zags? There's been some zigs and zags. Um, generally, once I get in a company, it I seem to be easy to move up what's inside of it and, and giving promotions in place. But I did have some um, layoffs in the dot-com day. And even at my current company, you know, I had my eyes on a certain position and it didn't come through and it was hard to understand that. And, and, it, and it hurt, it hurt, but then you, you reflect back on it and kind of glad that that didn't happen. Sometimes you never know which doors are supposed to open, but um, yeah, there's always going to be, going to be setbacks. You know, getting laid off can be in a tremendously heartbreaking experience mm -hmm. and if you don't get a job right away it starts eroding at your confidence and and you know you're supposed to provide and, and you have all that pressure um fortunately it wasn't for a terribly long period of time but you know i feel for people that are out of a work for a year or mm -hmm. longer 
it, it, it's got to, and I've worked with people. It just is really, really hard to overcome that. So, so let's build on that a little bit. You, um, you said that being out of work can, can really impact you, maybe uh, create some self-doubt. I imagine for our young adults that are getting ready to enter the workforce, and they're excited about that, they're finishing their schooling, and uh, then that, that position doesn't come in, that job doesn't come in, and they feel like they're just beating their heads up against the wall. What, what advice would you give to them, Eric? Because I, I know that you love mentoring. So it's awfully hard to see the forest for the trees and its perspective. And when you look back, you'll have great 2020 vision when you look backwards. But when you're in that position, it's terribly difficult to have um, good perspective. So, you know, a lot of gospel principles apply here, faith, hope, uh, continue to to continue working. I, I when I look back on my layoff, I realized that certain things had to happen for to me, or in order for me to consider working for government sector again, in, in the utility space, and uh, and being in that tough position made me actually open up my eyes to what other possibilities there were. I was really determined that I knew exactly what I wanted to do and it wasn't going to work and it wasn't going to be working in the public sector. But when things get tight, you start taking a look at other opportunities. And what sure. I didn't know how good it was going to be for me and my family. And we look back on it as a tremendous blessing. But at the time, you can't see that. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, my advice is just to continue to have hope, continue to have faith, do your best to not lose confidence and remember that someone else is at the helm and will take care of you. If you I like that. Yeah. yeah, that's great. That's great. I, I see that discouragement in young adults. And then when they start to make some progress, it's uh, that, that, light goes off and they're, they're just ready to, they feel like they can conquer the world. They sometimes, uh, they may not have a job offer uh, for a while, and then all of a sudden they've got two or three to consider. So, <laughs> <laughs> so how did your, uh, Eric, how, how well do you think your, your education at, at BYU prepared you to enter the workforce? And, and it has, have you seen just as much education um, you know, postgraduate uh, as as you did uh, as a as an undergraduate. Uh, yes, Pro, you know, I continued on and did an, an MBA afterwards, and that's the formal education. But in technology, if you do not learn on a consistent basis, you're going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I graduated. Oh my goodness. Looking back, it has been almost 30 years, 95, I think it was, so 27 years ago. And uh, the the state of technology was, you know, 30 years old. In fact, education is a little bit behind what the current state of technology is. So I'm at least 30 to 35 behind, years behind what I learned then. Wow. But what it, what I, what it did for me, and when I look back, is it taught, it gave one, it, it, it gave me confidence that I knew how to learn and that I could figure it out. And the ability to problem solve, to be able to tackle, you know, what, what my kids will say is, dad, I hate word problems. Well, honey, in life, it's all word problems. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to be able to take the data, try to structure it and figure out um, a good approach to that. And so that is one great big thing that I learned. Um, Plus, there was tools and techniques that I learned in a computer science degree that um, generally aren't taught um, in the smaller schools or in the smaller tech schools. So I still go back to a lot of that. But, you know, just getting that confidence, knowing how to learn, uh, knowing that you can learn and that you can do hard things has been big for me in, in my, my career and then never stop learning. Continue. Right continue to find what you can. And, and plus, the other part of it is there are doors that now open for me that would not have without that formal education. Mm -hmm. 
Um, although in this career field, it is not, there are plenty of doors that open for people that have experience and that have gumption and that I mean, some of the richest people, well, Bill Gates didn't graduate from college, mm -hmm. you know, and many other technologists, Mark Zuckerberg dropped out of college. Now they were brilliant and they were geniuses and, and they saw an opportunity and they pursued it. But most of us probably fit in the category where we're not geniuses or, or have that big of an opportunity laid out in front of yeah. us. Yeah. So it sounds like, it sounds like one of the advice that you, uh, that you'd give a young adult is, is expect a lifetime of learning Absolutely. because things, things change. We have to adapt to the changes and we have to stay cutting edge all the time. So, yep. okay. So the information technology and software development, uh, what do you see as the rewards of being in that business and what are the challenges? So I have peers that work in the planning division at Denver Water and they plan on a 50 year horizon. It could be that they never see the results of what they've planned, or they'll be in their 80s when they finally see those results. In, in my industry, you can see the results of your efforts sometimes in minutes. And it is very much uh, an art. It's an art and a science, but it's I like that it can be very creative. You're given tasks to solve certain problems and the best problem solvers are the ones that can be extremely creative. They take the tools and the techniques that they've learned, but they're able to bring those to bear to, to solve a problem. And the more creative you are, the better. Uh, and uh, so I'm a thinker that sometimes drives my wife nuts because I'm tangentially thinking about all these different things. And then I'm always thinking about what can go wrong because that's part of software development too, is you're trying to prevent problems and your risk management is, is part of it. And, and you're always trying to protect from some of those things that, that can go wrong, but you're always thinking, you're always problem solving. But so if you like to problem solve and you like to be creative, then, then go for it. Another problem too, or I, what I hear some people say is they have a perceived problem as they say, I don't always want to be behind a computer all the time. I'm not. I, I'm always meeting with, meeting with people. I'm listening to people. I'm trying to solve their problems. And that makes me better for it. And I actually love it when finally I can sit down and I don't have a meeting. I can sit down and actually get some things done. But it, it's a good balance. So if you think, wow, you know, I don't always want to stare at a computer screen. Well, that's the majority of jobs nowadays anyway, staring at a computer screen. But it, it, at least in my job, it's there's a lot of human interaction. So Eric, um, in information technology and software development, what, are, uh, what do you see as, as, as critical credentials for one to, to achieve in order to, first of all, get that position, and secondly, advance? Well, there are a lot of different specialities inside of that. Um, and, and I guess, it, you know, to start to state clearly, there is no professional engineering cert that, 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 that's offered that you have to have. Like if you're going to practice engineering, electrical engineering or mechanical engineering, you have to have your what, PE, your professional engineers um, license that you can do this. There's no license that's required. So quite literally, some developers are what we call hackers. They're just trying to piece it together and that, that's okay. But um, places where I would specialize and get certifications, especially for young people coming up, things that are really emerging strong are, if you're interested in security, security is very hot and certifications in security can help you. As a, so cyber security? Cyber security, yes. Okay. Cyber security, data science is pretty hot. Anything to do with cloud, cloud computing, so, you know, Amazon clouds, Azure cloud, even Google cloud, if you can get um, certs inside of those would be really, really advantageous. 
Um, and I think another really exciting area is artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Been around for a long time, but it's starting to get very real, very practical, and it's showing up in so many facets of our life. And um, those are some, you know, if I were studying and going again, I would be probably, you know, going towards one of those. I was a generalist. I did databases and software and then IT, and those are all fun things, but you know, the four things I just mentioned are really blossoming. And Okay. So you, you had mentioned that part of your advancement was due to your ability to problem solve for others. It's not necessarily sitting behind a computer. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's listening to people. Can you, can you think of other characteristics of great leaders in, in information technology and software development that just the characteristics that they would have that you, you feel that helped to propel them forward? Uh, probably first and foremost is that ability to dream and envision. You know, if we're talking software development, particularly having that, that, that dream and then being able to enlist others to help you get that dream accomplished. So it's definitely uh, people leadership and not driving, you know, sometimes you have to be the kind of leader that people want to follow and can also see that vision. So, you know, their ability to communicate, to paint that dream. And then you don't kid yourself. There's a lot of drive and a lot of passion that mm -hmm. is required. And, and uh, it can be kind of brutal, you know, especially in a startup, how much at level of effort can go there. In my career field, not near as, as, I guess, the time requirements aren't near as high in, in general information technology on for the most part. But if you are a software developer in a startup, you're gonna be working pretty hard generally, mm -hmm. which is fun and be, can be great. And, and, and also can depend on the place you are in your life. You, you know, you'll look back on those times with fondness, but it, it can be quite challenging. So, young person, they're either in, they're either interested in exploring a career in information technology or in software development, or they're ready to jumpstart that career. They've they've got their degree, or they're close to getting their degree. They want to pursue. They want to move forward. They want to be successful. What advice would you give them on? Uh, on getting that great position and, and making a statement. So there will be a lot of competition out there. Um, a couple of things I, I would do. One is to, you know, your resume probably is pretty lacking at this point. That, that's quite a strong possibility. So I, I like it when people can do volunteer work for, church, clubs, societies, any, anywhere <laughs> where they can help, where they're actually doing hands-on practical work, uh, the kind of work that they would like to do. Um, and you can volunteer for open source development projects too. And it gets you, you know, a, a bullet in your resume that, that will stand out. So right now you're, you're trying to stand out. Um, but do not overlook the resources that you have in your local wards and stakes. Because information technology and software development is so ubiquitous now, I guarantee you there is someone or multiple people in your local wards and in your stakes that would be amazing resources. Ask around in your wards to see, hey, who's doing what you wanna do? And you'll find one eventually, I, I'm, I'm sure of it. And then just ask them, can I pick your brain? Can I take you out to lunch? Uh, and, and almost in the vast majority of cases, even if they're busy, they like to eat and they'll make time for you. Uh, and, uh, and they can give you, well, you, we've all heard the adage, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And that's a big part in finding the job. Right. So get out, meet people get to know them. And when you're networking and when you're having a nice mentoring discussion with someone from your ward, be, 
you know, make sure you thank them, but ask them again, do you know of someone else that might have some time, you know, some good advice to offer me? And they will. And in most cases, they'll even be willing to introduce you to their coworker or to their acquaintance. And then you keep working that and they will remember you and chances are, are good that it's that the job that you'll get is probably because of who you know yeah. and, and making you stand out. The resume, you're competing with everybody else. And a lot of those introductory resumes, they, they look really similar. Mm -hmm. So it sounds, uh, it sounds like you've already watched our video on our website about informational interviews. So I haven't. <laughs> well, you just, you sounded great. So um, if I'm interested in exploring the uh, career in information technology, software development, are there, are there any books? Are there any websites, periodicals that I should be looking at? Uh, something that can give me additional direction in, in addition to those informational interviews that you, you discussed? There are lots and lots of resources, great places to start. Um, even YouTube. YouTube is free. And there are many, many courses that are offered in YouTube. So you can start getting a feel for what it is that you would you would like to do. Uh, I, I love um, some software based training sites. One is called Pearl site. It's actually out of Farmington, Utah. Uh, and Draper, I think, um, and for, but that one's paid for, um, but although they do have some free weekends on it, then, um, but there's just a plethora of just areas where you can get specific uh, training courses. Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y dot com is uh, one of my favorite sites, and there you can buy a, a course the courses go on sale all the time and you can buy them for like 12 to $20 and up to 40 hours of training for 20, $20. It's a, it's nice. a really good, a really good deal. And they can get very specific on what it is you'd like. And then I also like to learn from books and the website packetpub.com. That's P-A-C-K-T-P-U-B.com. It has over 7,000 technical books and it's a subscription uh, site. And they have an introductory five month offering for $5 a month where you have you know, more than you could ever, ever read. And if you're a book reader, a book learner, I would pop out and definitely get a subscription to them. And I will say as someone who interviews a lot of people, when I hear, that the um, candidate on their own is showing their gumption to go out and just learn and that they subscribe to these sites and they're going through textbooks. It tells me there's a self learner. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have to show them everything to do, everything that they should do. They're getting after it on their own. And that gives me a tremendous amount of credibility and confidence that they're going to be able to do it. I like that. That's so I, I think that that's really important. Self-learning, be self-managed, self-motivated. Uh, nobody wants to take on a responsibility and feel like they need to hold the hand of that individual all the time. They, they want them to show, like you said, the gumption to move forward on their own. So Eric, um, so you're a busy guy. You've got how many direct reports now? Uh, I think it's around 29. We actually okay. went down, used to have 45 and we've gone. All right. So it goes, it goes up and down, but you're, you're a busy guy. You're, you're, you're busy with your work. Um, you're also a family man, right? You have church responsibilities and, and what are you doing now in the church? I work with a Spanish branch. So I'm a counselor in a Spanish branch in Boulder, Colorado. Oh, excellent. Excellent. So up. how, how do you do it? You're, you're so busy. You've got all these commitments. Um, you've got family. I don't know if you have any grandkids yet. But, no. Uh, not yet. <laughs> Dropping hands. Some married, but they're doing law school. Okay. They're doing law school. So um, 
how do you how do you recommend that people keep balance in their life? I mean, that's that's really important in order to not get burned yeah. out. And that's a wonderful question, especially when so many of the uh, career or careers can go remote. We're bringing our our work home with us. Well, we are at home, mm-hmm. and it's too easy to go in and log in. So burnout is a is a real thing, um, and you know, you, you need to be good at being able to manage your calendar, but um, try to turn it off. Turn it off when dinner comes, be done, uh, and, and it'll be there for you in the morning. Um, I generally, you know, sometimes I'll have an idea, so I'll write it down. If it comes to me at night, you know, I'll make sure and write it down somehow, but then I'll pick it up in the next morning when I get it. And then for me, I have, you know, I mentioned gardening and, and home remodeling. Those are all things for the home, but what I've learned lately, and it works pretty well, (laughs) is try to get hobbies that your kids like, and then you're with them too. Um, My kids don't like fishing. I like fishing, but I don't go out and fish anymore. So I I don't know, I'm trying to do things that my kids like. I'm doing a hydroponic garden. Well, it wasn't something I was thinking I'd ever do, but my daughter is in in a landscaping design major and she's building hydroponic gardens. So I learned to do it from her and she gives me guidance all the time. So that's a hobby, but it keeps me in contact with my children. Sure. Another daughter who is really into music. And so I'm trying to build kind of a music production room, you know, kind of technical (laughs) and I'm bringing in the equipment and we've got electronic drum sets and all that. And really exactly wasn't my thing, but I love doing it with her. So if you can try to cater for me, cater the hob my hobbies to where I can do things with others that keeps those relationships going but also ticks that box that I'm I'm in downtime I'm rejuvenating my spirits and um and I'm feeling you know more refreshed and then the other thing too and since this is the BYU Management Society is for me Sunday it has become a delight it really can become a delight so be purposeful and deliberate about the Sabbath day as much as you can, because it is for you in the end. And then you feel good on Monday. You're not dreading Monday because you've used the day for the purpose that the Lord has put it aside for us. So we really do need that rest. And, um, you know, I know it sometimes is hard, and but um, it actually is for you and it's in your own best interest. Yeah. To- yeah. I love that. I love that balance in life. So, uh, Eric, so you had mentioned go out to people in your ward, go to individuals in your stake, ask them um, for their advice on jumpstarting a career. Any other, any other networking advice that, that you would give to, to a young adult that's either interested in exploring or is ready to jumpstart a career? Yeah. There are in most every community um, meetups on most of the most any technology that you can think of and they bring in guest speakers uh, if that is your thing and you like going out and, and, and rubbing shoulders with people like that then go out and do the meetups also there are especially nowadays that after covid uh, there seem to be a lot of virtual conferences that are free that people can sign up for i know microsoft has some big virtual conferences that are free. Um, who else? I've, I've seen a few others that they're free. So you can get in there and you can end up in some networking rooms, but you can get a really great exposure with no no cost on your part. Hmm. That's great. So getting exposure and and keeping up that, that mentoring circle that you've established and continually uh, dripping on them, as we say, Mm-hmm. So that they they they're constantly aware that you're there, and that you're excited about the uh, potential to enter that field. And and I've always found that it's through the networking that um, um, that's you know done the best job. I I've been in my industry for 36 years. I've only applied once <laughs> to a company. So. <laughs> Uh, so, Eric, in, in, uh, in finishing up this interview, is there any other career advice that you'd, that you'd like to offer young adults? 
Um, so we've all heard begin with the end in mind from Franklin Covey or from Covey. And when you approach any lunch you have with someone or any, um, any interview that you're doing or any presentation that you're doing, know that envision it out ahead of time and ask yourself three questions. What do you want people to think at the end of that time? What do you want them to feel? And are there any decisions that you want them to make? And if you reverse engineer it like that, you know, if it's an interview, I want them leaving with confidence and trust that I can do this job. I want them to feel energized about me. I don't want them flat. And the decision I want them to make is he's ready for that next step mm -hmm. and, uh, and let's bring them in. It, and, and try not to be timid, just try to en envision that successful outcome and, and it can happen. And the other thing too, and this is one thing we always look for in candidates and it's three things we want them to be, and we've heard this in the industry, humble, hungry, and smart. I want to know I can coach you. I don't want to hear that you know everything when you're coming in. I want to know that you're intelligent, that you're smart enough to do the job. And I can see that from your past, that you've been able to problem solve and that you can do it on your own and with the help of others. And on the hungry part, I want to know that, that you have an appropriate level of ambition, that you just aren't there for a job. I want to know there's some hunger. And the hunger is what helps you do the studying outside of the hours. The hunger is what helps you stay current. And uh, if, if, if you have, you're smart but, and you're humble, but you're not hungry, I know I'm going to have a hard time motivating you. Maybe you're not the right fit. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And if you're not coachable, that's a problem too. So just think about that. Try to make sure you, you appear humble, hungry, and smart, and that you exude that in your in your presentation and the way you dress and the, and the way you respond to the comments. And um, that'll, that'll, at least that's been a good adage for me. Okay. Well, that sounds terrific. I, I want to thank you, Eric, for your time today. Um, the information, the advice that you've given to young adults, I, I believe is spot on. Uh, so this is an informational interview that we're doing with Mr. Eric Decker. And I just want to remind the audience that they can do their own informational interviews with those people in their ward or within their stake. Uh, come up with a list of intelligent questions to ask them and, and show that you've done your homework in preparing for that interview. Uh, you can also go to our website. There's several places on the website about conducting informational interviews. I want to thank you again, Eric. and. Uh, I hope that the audience has, has great success in, in listening to your advice. Thank you very much. Thank you.